sorry previous lecture was somehow stopped so it's con this video is in continuation of that previous video now how do we define this autocorrelation uh, so you have a random process x of t okay let's take this value at time t1 and time t2 so at time t1 the value is x of t1 and at time t2 value is x of t2 x of t1 x of t2 are random variables two different random variables and we if we are given the joint you know probability density function of these two as p of x1 x2 comma x1 x2 so i i will omit the time domain so i will i will denote x of t1 as x1 and x of t2 as x2 that is also the notation for me so if you are given the joint uh, pdf then how will you define the autocorrelation or x of t1 t2 also denoted as x1 x2 bar and it is expected value of x of t1 x of t2 or you can also write expect value of x1 x2 if you are given the joint pdf then you can directly use the definition e x1 x2 sorry uh, i should first of all write here x1 x2 okay particular values that they take then p x1 x2 x1 x2 dx1 dx2 and the values we write here from minus infinity to plus infinity okay so it means to compute uh, autocorrelation function you need at least uh, you know joint pdf at two time instants okay now uh, i will just show an example of uh, which is also in the book uh, how a random process can vary this is one you know possible random process suppose x of t and uh, as you can see that uh, this process is slowly varying okay this is slowly varying it means that when you move from t1 to t2 okay so there is some variation in fact we denote the difference between the time as tau okay so we can see that uh, the variation or slow hence you know the the correlation has clearly some meaning now co co compare to this compare to this let me show some a process like this very fast varying okay so if you take time t1 here time t2 here you know the correlation is not so clear here is very fastly varying process okay uh, we will see some examples later on where we will, where we will get uh, some more clear picture but right now i want to uh, classify random processes uh, there are several classification of random processes one of the simplest random process uh, is that's called a stationary random process stationary random process so what do we mean by stationary random process a random process whose uh, characteristics will not change with time okay so what does it mean for example we have a random process with uh, uh, with probability density function of i denote as p of x t this is the notation so at time t uh, what will be the uh, you know distribution of a random process x of t okay so by stationarity we mean that if we shift the time in a step suppose we take first time t1 and then we take time t2 is equal to t1 plus t0 we shift the time then the pdfs at px of x t2 if that is same as px of x t1 okay then we say that it is a stationary random process in other words the probability density function of a stationary random process does not depend on time 
okay and correspondingly the definition of autocorrelation will also simplify so it means that you know the origin is not important that is the origin of time is not important for stationary random process okay at any point of time it starts the distribution will remain same now how does that affect the definition of autocorrelation you see we defined autocorrelation at two different times uh, expected value of x of t1 x of t2 so what we can say is we can basically take any time t and we can take time t plus tau okay then the what is the autocorrelation between the random process at time t and t plus tau that will be x of t x of t plus tau its expected value now since for stationary random process the origin does not matter it means that the time t where i start is will not affect distribution whereas this tau how far is the other you know uh, point we choose it depends only on that so for stationary random process the autocorrelation function will be only function of tau that is difference between the time intervals it will not depend upon the exact point t where i started the first point okay that is obvious and for stationary random process if i take samples at t1 t2 and suppose tn i denote them by x1 x2 and xn then the joint uh, density function uh, okay let me first take out of these let me take only two x1 x2 okay so for stationary random process this x1 x2 right it will also depend only on the time difference t2 minus t1 the joint distribution will not depend upon where exactly you choose t1 right but the only difference between the two time intervals and even if you take this joint distribution okay this joint distribution will also be independent of choice of origin it will be independent of choice of origin of time independent of choice of origin of time okay it will not be you know i will not um, give more emphasis on this because we are not assuming such a process this type of stationarity is called strict sense stationarity strict sense stationarity because you are basically assuming that all the distribution is or all the joint distributions are stationary okay which is not so practical okay uh, such random processes do not occur so uh, you know widely but we will assume a slightly weaker stationarity that we will, will be defined as wide sense or also called weakly stationary process okay wide sense stationary or weakly stationary process what does it mean so one condition i have already told that if a random process if a random process is such that if a random process suppose x of t is such that its mean is constant its mean that is we can write as mu x of t which is also defined as expected value of x of t or as the notation x of t bar this is constant and we for for this weak sense stationary or wide sense stationary we don't need all the distribution should be independent of origin no we only need that autocorrelation function or x of t1 t2 should be uh, should only depend upon difference between the time interval 
which we also call as Rx of tau, where tau is t2 minus t1. That is it. We don't need, see, we, we are not talking about joint distribution here. That joint distribution should be independent of origin. No. Even we are not talking about this second order uh, distribution should be. No. We are talking about only mean and autocorrelation function. If mean is constant and autocorrelation function depends only on the difference between the time interval. Suppose you, you are here t1, this is here t2. The value of random process is x of t1, x of t2, right? The process for which when you compute x expected value of x of t1, x of t2, if this, are, if this comes out to be always a function of difference between the time interval, it is not function of t1 or t2 separately, no. Then this random process is called wide sense stationary random process, okay? I will... And this lecture with one example which will give you more clear picture. Same example we are following from day one. X of t is equal to a cos of omega c t plus capital theta. You all know in this random process, what is random actually? We have a phase which is a random variable, uniformly distributed random variable, uniformly distributed. random variable and uh, it's this over 0 to 2 pi okay so it's pdf as you recall is was this otherwise okay we get the justification why this pdf would be like this now the first quantity uh, we need to determine is mean but before that you may have one question in your mind that should we denote should we find px of uh, x comma t uh, you can find but not needed why because you we have a here well defined function of this random process for any particular time t x of t is a random uh, is a function of theta and we can use this fact expected value of any function of random variable is simply integral g of x then distribute density of x dx so hence the mean which you call it x bar of t or expected value of x of t will be uh, mean of a cos omega c t plus theta so a cos omega c t plus theta and we just need to write the density function of theta from 0 to 2 pi okay so this will be equal to 0 to 2 pi a cos omega c t plus theta times 1 over 2 pi d theta okay so this will be now we are integrating with respect to theta so it will be a by uh, 2 pi minus sine of omega c t plus theta from 0 to 2 pi which is minus a by 2 pi i think uh, it will be plus only okay uh, so it will be sine of omega c t plus 2 pi minus sine of omega c t you know sine of omega c t plus 2 pi sine omega c t so it gets cancelled and we get it zero the first condition is satisfied mean is zero it's constant now let's check about the autocorrelation function okay so autocorrelation function of this random process we write as rx of t1 and t2 okay so it is defined as expected value of x of t1 x of t2 okay which is expected value see uh, in the book you will see this notation more often x1 x2 bar i like to write expected value like this okay one and the same thing so it is a 
cos omega c t1 plus uh, theta again a cos omega c t2 plus theta okay so it becomes a square cos of omega c t plus theta okay this one and now see a square is a constant it is not random so i can take it outside the expectation okay a square and what inside is cos uh, cos of it's a form of cos of a and cos of b okay so we will use one formula that uh, cos a cos b is cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b one half okay so when you apply to this a is equal to omega c t plus theta t1 b is omega c t2 plus this theta so then cos a cos b becomes one half of cos of a plus b so it is this plus this so it becomes omega c t1 plus t2 plus 2 theta and cos of a minus b so when you subtract a and b theta will get cancelled so we get omega c uh, t i can write t2 minus t1 because it is even function t1 minus t2 and t2 minus t1 will not matter so hence we put this value here back so we get rx of t1 t2 as a square by 2 expected value of cos of omega c t1 plus t2 plus 2 theta plus cos of sorry it will be here uh, plus okay plus cos of uh, omega c into t2 minus t1 okay now let's take term by term so this will be equal to a square by 2 expected value of, uh, expected value of these two quantities now let's take the first term expected value of cos of omega c t1 plus t2 plus 2 theta so what will be equal to it will be equal to integral then first write this cos of omega c t1 plus t2 plus 2 theta then the density function of theta from 0 to 2 pi okay it's a very simple exercise just find it will be equal to zero again the same thing it will be sine of this plus and the period of uh sine is two pi it will be zero then it means that rx of t1 t2 will be equal to a square by 2 expected value of the second term which is cos of omega c t2 minus t1 but there is no randomness here the random variable was only theta so when you have a constant the expectation sign will not be there it will be simply cos of omega c t2 minus t1 now if you take one time interval as t1 and t2 as t1 plus tau so that t2 minus t1 is tau which is the difference between time intervals then you see that you can write autocorrelation function as a square by 2 cos of omega c tau hence this autocorrelation function is only function of difference between the two time intervals it does not depend upon the exact t1 and exact t2 hence we have two properties satisfied that mean is zero which is constant and autocorrelation is only function of time difference tau hence the given random process x of t which is a cos of omega c t plus theta is wide sense stationary wide sense stationary process okay ws short 
this much for today's lecture we'll continue with more concepts and examples next lecture thank you